And um, we are endeavoring in a lot of different activities. And one is our TV broadcast, the Encouragement Zone. He was had a broadcast in Detroit, and uh, we share that uh, ministry together. And I thought it would be awesome if he would come and speak uh, to you today about some of the things that he is doing in the Huntsville area. So with that said, um, I present to you uh, Elder Pastor Mike McDougall from Detroit, Michigan, living in Huntsville, Alabama now. Uh, hear ye him, and uh, just uh, bear witness to the truth. Amen. You got me. Praise the Lord. Somewhere to see it. So praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy. He's got a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I'd like to thank God for this awesome opportunity. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this awesome opportunity, Father God, that we would come together, Lord, to glorify you. You be lifted up, Father God. You said you draw all men unto yourself, Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father God, that I would decrease that you may increase more and they may not see my but see you father god and i just yes, thank you for this awesome opportunity in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. i certainly like to thank uh, my people that came all the way from huntsville amen <laughs> and love you uh, <laughs> love y'all too for just coming out and supporting uh and when bishop gave me the opportunity uh the lord told me to speak about real men pray Mm. Amen. All right. Yes, sir. That's the topic of the sermon. Uh, it's real men pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Real men pray. You know, our life here on this earth, in this planet, is very short, and uh, it's a short-lived life, and we don't spend enough time. I believe we don't spend enough time as men uh, praying. I think, and, and prayer is a posture. It's it's not you know it's just we have to spend all our time on our knees. It's, it's a posture that we get an opportunity to spend time with God. And the Bible says, again, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, yes. seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Amen. If my people. Mm -hmm. That two-letter word, that if we don't spend time with God, then we'll never know what direction God wants us to go in as men. Come on, Doc. If my people will humble themselves, if and humble, men walk around with too much pride today. All right. And so we need to humble ourselves before God humbles us. And he said, if my people would humble themselves, amen, amen. So we need to humble ourselves. If, if, if my people would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. Huh? We gotta humble ourselves as men and, 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 and walk into this call that God has called. He's called us to be leaders. Amen. All right. Amen. Come on. And we can't lead without Christ. Right. Christ is our leader. He's the awesome leader that, that we need to humble ourselves in front of, that we may lead those that God has allowed us to lead. Amen. 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 Men all to always humble themselves. And as, as God's representatives, we need to find ways to humble ourselves before God humbles us. Now, real men pray, and in an opportunity to, to get an opportunity to pray, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Praise, praise. Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to start at verse 5. When you have it, say amen. Amen. If you don't have it, say wait a minute. Amen. And it's in red, so we know this is Jesus speaking. Amen. He said, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites do, as are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, thou shalt shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, 
for they think they will be shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, a lot of times as 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 believers, we just start praying the same things over and over and over. The Bible says, "Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the vain men. Don't be like the, the unsaved do when we pray." All right. Unsaved people continue to just pray and, and think that they're going to be heard by their much speaking, their much hearing, the much that they speak out. But God said, don't be like them. Because remember now, he called us out of the world Amen. All right. into his kingdom. And so we're not to act like the world acts and to speak like the world speaks and to ask God for the same things. Now, prayer is a posture for a man of God. What you say? It's a posture that we should be in all the time. What you say? It says, pray without ceasing. Yes, sir. So we should always be in a posture of prayer. Amen. So we can always hear what God has for us to hear. Amen. Come on, Doc. <laughs> Talk about it. We have a model for prayer. And our motto was Jesus Christ. All right. All right. Amen. And Jesus said, in one of the scriptures says that men should always pray and not faint. All right. mm -hmm. And you know that Jesus always was in prayer with his father. He said in one scripture that, my father, I know you hear me. You always yeah. hear yeah. and answer me. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah. How many of us are always getting our prayers heard and answered by God? Yeah. <laughs> How many of us are always, our prayers are always answered by God? If it's not being answered, that we're not spending enough time with All right. Because right. he always hears and he always answers. Yeah. All right. And he's our role. Jesus is our example that he's left here. And he set us some examples to us to live by as men. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise you. Praise, Amen. praise Amen. Man. Good work. Amen. Amen. So, prayer is a posture. But without belief. Mm. What good is praying? All right. All right. Turn we to Mark chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can pray all day, but if I don't believe, mm -hmm. what good is prayer? All right. Mm -hmm. I was in prayer about a house that I wanted to have for, for, for the men that I started a ministry called Growing in God's Grace and we're housing homeless men. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him. And I kept riding by this house on four and a half acres of land. Although I'm grateful that God allowed us to have some apartment buildings to start the ministry in, but I always believe God for big things. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. I believe God for that van sitting out there. Come on now. Amen. I believe God for a big place where I looked and I seen this house on four and a half acres of land. And I started asking God about the, the house and I started trying to figure out in my own three pound brain of how I was going to pay for the house. Mm -hmm. And God said, turn me to Mark. Let me go to Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. All right. My mama. Starting verse 23. He says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Praise him, praise So you can pray and not believe and not get. So a lot of times our prayers are hindered because we really don't believe what we're asking God for. So I started asking God for this house. And, and, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to pay for it. He said, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe me for it. My God. You know come on, come on. Come on, come on. He said, I didn't ask you to pay for it. He yeah, said, I asked you to believe me for it. All right. See, we always try to understand and figure God out with this three pound grain, but the Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He said to acknowledge you in all my ways. And he will direct our path. Yes, sir. All right. Man, man. That is the word. Praise. So, if we're going to ask God for stuff, we must believe God for it before we receive it. Mm. Amen. you got to believe God for it before you receive it. Anybody can believe God.
God for something after he got it, he received it. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> Talk fast, Mike. <laughs> Man. So faith without works is dead. Mm. He said, therefore I say unto you, what so things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Believe that you received it, and you shall have it. When you're praying, you've got to believe God you received it, so you can have it. And it takes faith to do that. We can ask you all we want, but if you don't have faith to receive it, you're not going to receive it. You're not going to get what God has in store for you. And all he said, and the Bible says he's given to every man a measure of faith. All right. Every man. Yes, every sir. man. Yes, sir. Nobody checked that chair before they sat down. Nobody. Amen. <laughs> Anybody check the chair before they sat down? Praise the Pastor. You just believed it by faith. It was going to hold you. Ah, my, my. You believed that, that chair was going to hold you before you sat down. Of course, a familiarity. Yes, sir. Come on. <laughs> so we have faith. Mm hmm. What do we use our faith for? Amen? Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22. I hope y'all don't mind that I get into the scripture a little bit. Come on now. It keeps us safe. It's like ragu. Everything we need is in here. It's there. Matthew 21 and verse 22. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He says, Verily I say unto you, if you had faith and doubt not, you shall have, huh? If you have faith and doubt not, if we have faith, and he said, I've given to every man a measure of faith. If we have it, see, it's an exercise. We have to exercise our faith. Prerequisite, mm -hmm. yes, sir. You can't just sit on your faith. Come on, Doc, come on. You can't believe God for these businesses, these big businesses and these big desires that you want and not move on and act on it. Come on. You can't ask God for something and see, he's a big God, first of all. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us have believed God for little bitty things. Mm -hmm. But we should believe God for big things. Come on. Mm -hmm. Not right. little things, yeah. big things. He's a big God. Yeah. See, a lot of us believe God that we can get, go get a car. I don't believe that's, that's faith. Because, see, what the car calls car note. Right. Oh, that's a note. <laughs> see, the blessings of the Lord make it for one rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Yes, see, there's sorrow. That means if I believe God for the, the car, that means I got a car note. That means I got to get up and go and get a job. Right. <laughs> uh oh. Man, don't work. You shouldn't eat. To pay for it. But see, when God blesses you with something, there is no car note. Oh, Lord, okay. I know I ain't going to get much help here. But when God bless me with something, there's no sorrow, there's no toil that comes with it. When God bless you with something, it's free and clear. Anybody can go get a car, no? Come on, baby. Come on, Pastor. Anybody that wants the note can go get one. But when God gives you something, y'all, there's no toil in it. There's no stress in it. There's no one have to get up and go go to work in the next morning to make sure it's paid for. That's not blessings. You know, I was smiling when I, I had a, a mentor in Detroit that uh, his best year he did $9 million. And he was smiling when he opened up a business and, and everybody that was working for him went and got new cars. He started smiling because he knew that means they were indebted to come to work to pay for those car loans. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Come on, Doc. God freely gives you stuff. I'll give you a little bit of my testimony. I, I, was, I had a fire uh, back in Detroit, the last house that I lost, okay, because at one time I had 40 houses and two apartment buildings, and I don't know what it is to work a nine to five. Because God told me if I took care of his business, he'd take care of mine. My, my, my. Right? Mm. Oh, oh, my God. Woo! <laughs> so, the last house I had, the Lord woke me up one night and told me to pack a bag. My God. I said, pack a bag? 
I rolled back over, that could have been God, right? <laughs> there it's me again, he said, Mike, pack a bag for a couple of days. So I packed the bag and uh, I left and went over to a friend's house. And that same night, somebody called me and said, your house is on fire. My God. Whoa. And I must have lost about um, sixty to seventy thousand dollars in clothes alone. I was on TV in Detroit three times a week, positive talk with Mike, and I was a uh, pastor over a homeless shelter. And God was just really doing a lot, and He was a lot, allowing a lot of things to happen because He had to humble me. Mm. And so, with the last house that I had, that He allowed the fire, and He said, "Mike, you've been ministering to men that was homeless and women that are homeless." For years, but you never know what it's like to be homeless. Mm. Mm. So that fire allowed me to see what it was really like to be homeless. Jesus. So I could sit in the same seat they were, and I could look over them and say, "Oh, you know, you need to go get a job or something Amen. like that." Amen. You know, because again, uh, with when the with the fire, Red Cross put you up for three days, and after that, you was on your own. You're on your own, Unless dog. You got three or four kids somewhere, and you was a female that you didn't get no help. I know I must know at least. Uh, 300 preachers that no one helped me. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping and staying at a church, mm -hmm. sleeping in the church one night, and I was crying out to God the next morning. Mm -hmm. And first, let me I'm back up. There were uh, <laughs> there was an organization that needed some Bibles, and so I called a friend of mine and asked him to go out and pick them up some Bibles. And the brother brought two boxes of Bibles to me, and one box I took and, and passed it out to the organization. The other box I seemed to hold on to. One morning I got up and I was crying out to God saying, Lord, you done brought me out here to leave me to die. All right. God told me to open up the Bible, y'all. I opened up the Bible and the Bible was brand new in a package and there was $4,500 wow. in old $50 bills in this Bible. My God, come on now, come on. He said, I told you I got you. He said, I told you I'm not going to bring you out here to let you die. That was just some of the supernatural things that God will do in your life if you believe and trust Him. Amen. 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 That's why He says, trust me. He says, trust me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. See, where God leads, He provides. He's always providing for us. That's what makes us, we're made in His image. We're, so we are men, we're providers. We provide. Yes, God always has a plan for us. If we ever submit to the plan of God, he said he'd make us the head and not the tail, a lender and not a borrower, above and not beneath. God has some great things in store for his children. Right. Huh? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. The word job, when God places us on jobs, men, the job is to learn the, the material there so you can go open up your own. My, you know, my, my, my. Stuck on these jobs. Come on, Doc. Come on. The Bible says a blessed man needs an inheritance for his children's children. Yes, sir. How do you yes, do that sir. on a job? <laughs> we get stuck. I'm telling you. 20, 30 years. Yes, sir. 20, 30 years. My dad spent on a job. 40 years he on a job. Within five years he died after he retired. My dad retired at 54 years old. Oh. Yes, yeah, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Jesus. 54, he had did his time. And within five years, he was gone. My God, my God. I said right then, no, not me. I said, I'll sell pop bottles, I'll pick up pop bottles on the corner. Anything to keep me from running behind that job. I look for businesses. Business owners. See, when we talk about the kingdom, kingdom is country, it's land, guys that we're supposed to be owners of. Mm -hmm. Ownership. Come on. I know I can't get no help. <laughs> <laughs> You're teaching, Doc. Woo! <laughs> anyway, let's go to James chapter 5. Can't get a hallelujah. Can just say ouch. Ouch. <laughs> How many of us get up every morning as men? How many of us get up every morning hating to go to work? Mm. Mm. Everybody got a job? Retired. That's one. <laughs> two years one. retired. I got one. Everybody else love that job. I got two. How many of us love what we do? I do. I do. 
I said I used to. I put me in that category. Hey man, because you, you really, you know, it's, it should be some enjoyment. Come on, yeah, man. In your work. It yes, sir. Yes, it sir. It should be. Yes, sir. It shouldn't have to work and, and get up and go to work and, and come home and go to sleep and get up and go to work and come home and go to sleep. That's not a fulfilled life. Come on, dog. As men. It's really not. Amen. That's why a lot of men turn to drugs and alcohol and sexual perversions that we get caught up in because we're not fulfilling the life that God died for us to have. Come on now. Wow. Real men pray. Yes, sir. And we have to ask God, what is my purpose? All right. All right. There is a purpose. There is purpose. Yes, sir. And some of the stuff we in, and everybody's not going to be an engineer. Right. No, no. Come on, Doc. Come on. Mm -hmm. not going to college. And then the ones that's engineers, a lot of them are not fulfilled either. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't going to college. <laughs> and God has, and he has birthed businesses and ideas in you. And you need to call, and you need to ask God, Lord, why? A vision and, and give me a business and, and give me an idea that I can become wealthy. Amen. A niche. Just guess Great. what God wants profitable <laughs> servants. Yes, sir. And if we broke, we can't help nobody else. Help us, help us, Lord. You're right about that. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Where does it turn? James, James. Amen. <laughs> James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. He says, Is any among you afflicted? Let mm -hmm. him pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him. Huh? Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall raise him up. That's it, Doc. That's it. If there's committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yes. He said the prayer of faith. She'll save the sick. Yeah, the Lord shall raise him up. Praise yeah. him, dark. Praise him. All right. So there shouldn't really be many, many around us, among us that sit because the prayer of faith. That's where this prayer and the belief comes in. Right. It's a posture. Right. But you got to believe yeah. in order to oh, receive God. it. Yeah. Mark 11, 24, so you've got to believe it in order to receive it. We've got to believe the prayers that we're praying. Some of us just pray All right. mm. with no belief. Amen. Yeah. Help us. Amen. No prayer, no, no, just doubt. No prayer, no power. My prayer. Mm. Little prayer, little power. All right. mm. Much prayer, much power. No prayer, yes, no sir. power. Right, right. <laughs> it's a posture that we should be in as believers. Yes, sir. Always praying. Always. Always praying, always believing. And I know Bishop got, you know, you're, you're building, what is that up to your building, Bishop? You got the... Gym, a gym and, and, and the, the, the classroom, classroom and the, the things. I know we've been praying for that probably for years. How long did it take for that to manifest? Long time, about five years. Five years. He's been praying to believe in God for it. But you Come see on. the ground breaking out there, right? Hallelujah. The prayer of faith. Glory, glory. He prayed and he believed. Yeah. And he received. He prayed, he believed, he received it before he received it because he got it now. Come on, come on, come on, Doc. God is always answering our prayers. You know, if he's not answering your prayers, I wonder, are you praying and listening for him? Are you waiting for God to talk to you? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we spend our time praying, but we don't, it's not, it's a relationship. It has to be both ways. Yes, sir. You yes, just sir. can't pray. He ain't no robot. He just can't rub on him when you get ready and then move on with your life. A lot of times we, we want God to, relationship. to line up with our prayer. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Look at the Lord's example, the example of his prayer. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Do we pray and ask God's will to be done, or do we want our will to be done? Right. Come on, come on. Are we praying and ask God for what he wants us to do, or are we praying and ask God to, to, to succumb along the way and believe what I'm doing? All right. Mm. Ooh. Have we been the gods of our own world for so long that we don't submit to God and, and receive the things from God because we've been gods ourselves? Mm. Whoa. We want God to, to line up with our products and, and our program? 
Yeah. Want him to line up, huh? All right. We need to line up with him. Right. Yes, sir. Because yes, in him is the fullness of joy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 His pleasures are forevermore. All right. Tell the truth. Real men pray. Real men pray. Yeah. Praise. Yeah. Praise. Turn on Philippians with me, chapter 4. Right. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus. We'll start at verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. It says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything. Right. Don't worry about nothing. Come on, God. Stop. If you're going to worry, why pray? Hello. If you're going to pray, why worry? <laughs> says, be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Mm -hmm. Let your requests be known unto God. God is always waiting to answer our prayers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said he'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, and guess what? Those desires he's placed there. Come on now. The Bible even says, I don't even know what to pray for as I ought. Come on, Doc. Come on. I don't even know what to pray for. But the Holy Spirit intercedes. He grabs a prayer uh, okay, and he lines it with, so. with the will of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we don't have no excuse. Amen. Mm. Because he grabs them out there and he, he intercedes and he, and he lines it up with the will of God. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Power. Hmm. Uh -oh. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise Praise the Lord. Mark 11. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Mark 9. I'm sorry. Mark 9. Thank you. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Verse 17 here. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gashes with his teeth, mm. and pinneth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they, and they could <laughs> not. They couldn't do it? All right. Here's the men that have been walking with Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years. Right. And so somebody brings somebody with an evil spirit, they bring them to Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't cast them out. Why do you think they were? <laughs> Lack of faith. They didn't believe. They had seen the man of God. Right. They had walked with the man of God, but they really didn't know who he was. They hadn't got a revelation. All right. Wow. Thank you. We gotta have revelation in our lives. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You gotta have some experience of what God has done in your life that All you right. can share with somebody else that Amen. He'll do the same thing He'll do for me, He'll do for you. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. He's able to do exceedingly above, beyond oh. more than I could ask and think according to the power that worketh in us. Oh, yeah. God is able. He's able. Yeah, yeah. Will you believe him for big things? Yes, See, it's so easy to believe God for little things, y'all. That's the, the little thing that you believe in God for, you can do yourself. Hello. <laughs> a lot of things I don't have to pray for. Right. A lot of things I don't have to pray for. Uh -huh. I don't have to pray again to go ahead and get a car. I don't have to pray for that. <laughs> I'll get one of them. Now, Lamborghini or something? Now, that's something different. <laughs> What's that? Lamborghini. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, fine, fine. Mark 9 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to verse 18. And whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foamed and gasped at his teeth, and pinneth it away, and spake to his disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I suffer you? Bring him to me. 
Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And he brought him unto him, right. and when he saw him, straight where the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long has it been since right. this came of him? Right. And he said, Of, of a child. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes he's cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, God. Come on, all man. things are yes, possible Lord. to them that believe. Yes. What do you believe in God for in this new season? Uh, what do you believe in God for in this time and place in your life right now? What do you believe in God for? Mm. Mm. We should be believing God for, for, for our president being changed. We should be believing God for our governor to be changed. We should believe in God for just for, for simple things as, as, as prayer coming back into school. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. As believers, we've been sitting around allowing them to do a lot, y'all. Right, we've been right. sitting around spectators right. at the football game. <laughs> we arguing over uh, 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 what's the two teams here? Uh, uh, Alabama, Alabama. Yeah, Alabama and then Auburn. Yeah. Auburn and Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, that's our biggest. That's our biggest. You know, I, I get so tired of hearing about the football. <laughs> like we kids, we got more in life to be concerned about it than a football game. Real men pray. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Everything is dying around us. It's drying up. The brook is drying up. And God needs some men to be praying to him and asking him for direction, mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. for strength, for power, for leadership. We should pray for our leadership. Yes, pray sir. that God will put the right people in leadership. Come on, come on, Doc, come on. Because right. right. the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence take it by force. Yes, you can't be passive in your walk with Christ. Right, man. You got to take back some things that the enemy stolen from you. Yeah. All right. And prayer, there's a the power in the prayer. And prayer and faith walk hand in hand. Come on, yeah, man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. I didn't think I'd be this long. <laughs> Any good? Amen. Amen. I'm going to do one more scripture and I'll go to Acts chapter 12. Right. Hope I'm helping somebody. You are. Yes, sir, you are. You're in the right place now. <clears throat> Acts chapter 12, mm -hmm. verse 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. Now about the time Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands and vexed certain of the church. Uh -huh. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Mm -hmm. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. My God. Come on, y'all. Okay. Then were in the days of leavened bread. Mm -hmm. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison mm -hmm. and delivered him to the four quadrants of soldiers to mm -hmm. keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, mm. but prayer was right. made for him prayer? without ceasing yes, sir. of the church unto God and for him. Uh -huh. And when Herod, had, Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Could you imagine y'all getting ready to die and y'all sitting in your sleep between the two soldiers? <laughs> That's all right. Peter had a kind of a faith that didn't even know or didn't even worry about the outcome of his life because he knew he was in God's hands. My God. He was asleep. Prayer was being made for him, and he said, Well, God's got this. Yeah, all right. Prayer did. Peter did more preaching in jail than we do out here on the street. Attitude, attitude. Praise him. Praise him, Doc. We got the freedom and the liberty to do it. We don't spend no time doing it. Right. This man did more preaching in jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> what verse does that? Six. You did seven. Now we're two chains. 
In verse 6. Okay, and when, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. Mm -hmm. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. Uh -huh. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon the him. Angel. And the light shined into the prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he smote Peter on the side, yeah. right up saying, Arise up quickly, Whee! and his chains fell off Watch from out. his hands. Yeah. My God. And the angel of the Lord said, unto Gird thyself, and bind thyself sandals. Mm -hmm. And so he did. Let's go. And he said unto him, Cast that garment about thee, uh -huh. and follow me. Let's go. And when Come he was on, out, Come and on. followed him, was not that it was true that it was done by the angel, but thought right. he saw a vision. <laughs> <laughs> That's powerful, man. When thou was past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which My opened God. to them Jeez. of its own accord. Lord, I received uh -huh. this. And, they went out. and then they went out Lord, and passed Lord. on through Lord. the Lord. street. Uh -huh. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know surely yeah. that the Lord has sent his angel yeah. and hath delivered me out of this, the, the hand of Herod. Yeah. And from all that expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Yeah. There was a knock at the door. I'm going to pray a praise a little bit. And Roman came to the door. They were praying for his release, but when he came to the door, he didn't believe that he was out there. Roman did not believe that he was free. Come on, God. How many times do you pray and don't believe? How many times when God brings it to your table, you don't believe he's done it, so you don't receive it? All right. You got to believe it in order to receive it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roman. Said, oh man, Peter's at the door. Yeah. And she went back to the people and started talking back on them. And she was trying to explain to them that Peter was at the door and they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. But they prayed. But they prayed. My God. That's good. That's good. That's good. What good is your prayer if you ain't gonna believe God for it? Yeah, yeah. If I had, had I been Peter, y'all went on about my business. I'll find me some more church folks. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? y'all trying to get to your destination, Bishop. You trying to get there. I mean, you just coming out of jail. And they're for you. You knock on the door. All the people, they just sent you bond money and everything. Yeah, and, you get yeah. there, and they don't let you in. Uh -huh. Yeah. Peter didn't believe that first, though. He didn't believe the angel. No, he didn't. He thought he was seeing a vision. He thought he had seen a vision. Amen. But prayer was made for him, and, and he was released. Yeah. Amen. 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 I thank God for this opportunity. Thank yes, for power. Let's give God a hand clap. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Let's remember. Thank you. Thank you. Real men pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Want to work, man, God. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for yes, this word that we received today, God. Pastor Mike, real men pray, and we should believe and receive. Expect God to move in a mighty way. <clears throat> Lord, replenish him today, God. Replenish him with everything he's pouring out. Yeah. Lord, just strengthen him no more with the vision you've given him for the yeah. men, yeah. Father God, in the restoration house and the women, Lord God. Open those doors, Father God, yeah. right now. Touch people's heart yeah. that they will receive the vision you've given him and support yeah. him in the ministry. Yeah. Yes, in God. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Powerful, Jesus. powerful. Amen. Yeah. Powerful word, praise God. Can I say this? Yeah. Uh, we're coming out of all we talk about the same thing. He said, I've done the same word he spoke about. Yeah. I got a double potion this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. My God. God. Confirmation. We're in the season Amen. of double. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We even talked about the man of God preached Friday, uh, Thursday night about that same word uh, in the revival. He was there, uh, uh, Deacon Jerry Smith, about a, a rotor. Mm. And Peter in prison. Sixteen soldiers. Mm. Sixteen soldiers got in one man. Uh, oh. Amen. Mm. And, and the church had so much power in uh. prayer that the Lord sent an angel. Yeah. Yeah. Change just we, dropped off. Yeah. Yeah. I agree to you today, some chains have dropped off. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The chains have dropped off. Yeah. The chains have dropped off. The chains have dropped off. The chains have dropped off. Yeah. Yes, sir. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Am
Amen. Does anyone have anything to say? We have Prophet Ali with us today. He's going to minister in our service. Amen. So praise, glad praise. to have him. Uh, would you like to say something now, sir? Yeah. Okay. Well, would any of the visitors? Just, just go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say this is a real uh, um, endeavor of men. And we listen to the instruction. The instruction is men ought to pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, prayer has to be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, angels moving on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be in this place this morning. But please, please, please go on your knees. Come on. Go on your knees to turn to water. Because anytime our knees turn to water, we've lost faith because of what we see. But when our knees is strong in prayer, mm -hmm. we are strong in faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes, sir. Yeah, around the neighborhood yeah, Christian Center. Refresh my memory then. Neighborhood Christian Center. I thought that. Yeah. yeah. Years ago. You, you in Huntsville now? No, no. We actually just came back. And, well, I'm, we're moving back. We were gone 15 years. Right. Yeah, we left here, went to Oklahoma and Memphis and some other states. And so, yes, sir. God, we're, we're we're God's bringing you. us back. <laughs> glad to have you back. Yeah, yeah, What's your name, sir? Limzell Johnson. Limzell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Brother Johnson. Amen. We thank God. We had a woman with us today, but we don't think we think everything was okay. Amen. 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 So I think we're we staying in line, but uh, <laughs> the time has moved on. We, we we're gonna move, but what we're gonna do now? I want to uh, lift an offering to bless uh, Pastor Mike and the ministry that God has given him uh, with the, with the uh, restoration homes um, there in Huntsville. And so we're gonna ask your offering to go to him. Today, and, uh, and he, he does a great work, and you know, it's believing God for great things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be a blessing to him. Thank you, Lord. Right Lord. Check. Lord. Mike, Mike, am I right? Yes, sir. Michael McDougal. Michael McDougal. M-C-D-O-U-G-A-L. <laughs> M-C-D-O-U-G-A-L. Amen. And after we, uh, we're going to have him to stand and actually leave out. You can put it in his hand. Be blessed. That's it. Amen. Get ready.